Hello everyone, my name is Eric. Today, I would like to share with you some ideas on atomic simulation of quantum transport in nanoelectronic devices. First of all, let me explain why atomic simulation can be useful in nanoelectronic device modeling. In the past five decades, the number of transistors on a single chip doubled every 18 months known as Moore's Law. As a result, the size of each transistor was reduced by half every 18 months. The channel length was 10 micrometers in 1971, 1 micrometer in 1985, 130 nanometers in 2002, and 22 nanometers in 2012. In the year 2015, Intel, Samsung, and TSMC began to mass market the 40 nanometer technology called FinFan. In the same year, IBM, working with global foundries Samsung, Sony, and various equipment suppliers, announced their success in fabricating 7 nanometer devices. A 7 nanometer silicon channel is about 50 atomic layers, and these devices are truly atomic. It is clear that the trend has moved from micrometer to nanometer all the way to the atomic scale. We have to realize that a continuous reduction in the transistor size may result in a discontinuous change in the underlying physics. In nanometer scale, electron behaves more like a wave than particles. Quantum effects such as energy discretization and tunneling are no longer negligible. On the other hand, if the channel length is comparable to the mean free path, electrons may experience much less inelastic scattering, and their distribution can be far from equilibrium. Quantum coherence, together with non-equilibrium statistics, lead to a transition from classical transport to quantum transport. Another important consequence of the small transistor size is that the material properties can be very different from those of bulk materials. Materials in nanoscale can no longer be viewed as continuous media. The position of every atom may have influence on the overall material properties. In particular, atomic structures at surfaces and interfaces may have significant impact on quantum transport. It will be very difficult to predict transport behavior accurately without knowing those details. Furthermore, nanoelectronic devices may have remarkable device-to-device -device variation due to the lack of self-average at small length scale. Therefore, atomic details are no longer detailed in nanoelectronic devices. One way to simulate nanoelectronic devices is to improve existing device models by including more and more parameters. This is called the top-down approach. Currently, this approach is the working horse of the industrial T-cut tool. However, as the device shrinks in size, the number of parameters grows rapidly, making the top-down approach more and more sophisticated and challenging. Most importantly, to continue the Moore's law, electronic engineers are exploring new electronic materials, new packaging dimension, and new operating mechanisms. These efforts are beyond the scope of well-established device models. Hence, significant changes are necessary to the top-down approach. An alternative way is called the bottom-up approach. The idea is to build up nanoelectronic devices atom by atom on the computer and predict the transport behavior from first principles. By doing so, one is allowed to go inside atomic structures and see what happens from there. The elegance of the approach comes from the unification and generality. We don't have to generate new parameters or create new models for emerging materials or novel designs. 
Everything comes up naturally from the very basic principles of quantum mechanics and non-equilibrium statistics. The bottom-up approach is complementary to the top-down approach and extremely useful for testing innovative ideas of future technologies. In recent decades, several device simulation tools using the bottom-up approach have been developed in universities and software companies. There were MagniKL, Transistor, Automistic Toolkit, Smigo, NanoDKL, NanoDCM, OpenMX, GPO, Nemo5, and many others. These software tools are capable of predicting electric current flowing through a nanostructure. Essentially, the input is the atomic coordinate and the output is the electric current. The software tools have been applied extensively to study emerging electronic materials and devices. To have an insight into the bottom-up approach, let me open one of the black boxes and show you how things work inside. The software tool of focus is called NanoDCM which is short for Nano-Electronic Device Simulator. In the simulator, a nano-electronic device is modeled by a true probe structure, where a central scattering region is connected to left semi-infinite lead and right semi-infinite lead. Both leads are in local equilibrium and can be regarded as reservoirs. The central scattering region is in non equilibrium, and the charge density is determined by the scattering states incoming from the reservoirs. The two probe structure is widely used in all atomic device simulators. The unique feature of NanoDCM is the capability of simulating random disorder in the central scattering region. We note that any realistic device may have a certain degree of imperfection, structural defects, or intended doping and alloying. Therefore, it is essential to take into account disorder scattering in device simulations. As mentioned above, quantum transport, atomic details, and random disorder are the essential physics in understanding nanoelectronic devices. How are these physics described by technical languages? In NanoDCM, quantum transport is described by the technical language called non-equilibrium Green's function, or NEGF. Physical quantities such as electric current are expressed in terms of Green's functions. In NanoDCM, atomic details are described by the technical language called Linear Muffin Team Orbital Method, or LMTO. LMTO is an implementation of the density functional theory in solid-state physics. In NanoDCM, random disorder is described by a generalization of coherent potential approximation, or CPA, in non-equilibrium situation. The technique does not involve disorder average in supercells, and hence reduces the computational cost substantially. In short, the theoretical formulation of nanodism is in the intersection of NEGF, DFT, and CPA. And the integrated formalism is referred to as NECPA LMTO theory. The NECPA LMTO theory is implemented in an object-oriented programming style, fully parallelized and distributed, with emphasis on maintainability as well as computational efficiency. The code has two levels. The higher level is in charge of flow control, including DCIM classes, DCIM solvers, and DCIM calculators. The interaction of DCIM classes with DCIM solvers and DCIM calculators facilitates self-consistent calculations and post-analysis calculations. 
The lower level is in charge of sophisticated algorithms, including libraries of Meton solver, Poisson solver, surface Green's function solver, block tree diagonal solver, MPM MATLAB interface, and so on. Each of the libraries can be invoked by higher level code or reused by other research code. The flow chart of the self-consistent calculation has 12 steps. Step 6 and step 10 are the most important ones. Step 6 is the NSPA step where the density matrix is calculated for a given Hamiltonian. Step 10 is the DFT step where the potential is calculated for a given charge density. The coupling of NECPA and the DFT is the soul of NanoDCM. Some notable functionalities and the features of NanoDCM are as follows. First, it solves device Hamiltonian in non equilibrium cells consistently in the presence of atomic disorder. Second, it is capable of simulating nanoelectronic devices containing a few thousand atomic size on a moderate computer cluster. Third, it has implemented a semi-local exchange correlation potential, which provides good band gap and effective math for common semiconductors. Fourth, it has implemented a post method tool to predict device-to-device -device variability due to random discrete dopants. A wide range of theoretical studies on quantum transport has been carried out using NanoDCM and its research code version. The examples are discrete dopant effects in silicon nanotransistor channels and its associated device-to-device -device variability. Surface scattering and coating effects in copper thin films to understand practical issues of interconnects. Disorder limited mobility of 2D materials such as graphene and black phosphorus. Disorder effects in tunnel field effect transistor of form nitride co doped graphene. Spin polarized charge connection in magnetic tunnel junctions and disorder effects of oxygen vacancies and cation ions. Band off size of semiconductor heterojunctions, junctions, resistance of copper gram boundaries, so on and so forth. In these studies, the device material includes metals, semiconductors, insulators, as well as emerging 2D materials. The device structure includes conventional MOSFETs, interconnects, magnetic tunnel junctions, as well as emerging TFETs. Here, we would like to emphasize that the generality comes from the power of first principles. So far, I have quickly reviewed the theory, implementation, functionalities, and applications of NanoDCM. If you wish to know more about technical details, you are referred to a newly published book, Atomy Simulation of Quantum Transport in nanoelectronic devices. In the book, we open the black box of nanoDCM and illustrate the complete procedure from theoretical derivation to numerical implementation all the way to device simulation. Meanwhile, the affiliate source code of nanoDCM provides an open platform for new researchers. So much for nanoDCM. It is just one example of many atomistic device simulation tools. Other software tools differ from NanoDCM by business type, core electron treatment, and implementation details. But all of them can predict transport properties of nanoelectronic devices without knowing phenomenological parameters. And the predictions are in good agreement with experimental data as well as other empirical models. Despite the encouraging progress, the bottom-up approach still has some challenges to meet. First, the computational cost is orders of magnitude larger than the top-down approach. It is still very difficult to simulate nanoelectronic devices with 1 million atoms, even on supercomputer. 
A possible solution is to generalize linear scaling electronic structure methods to quantum transport. Second, scattering mechanisms such as electron photon scattering and impurity scattering are either neglected or crudely approximated to reduce the computational cost. The scattering mechanisms can be included to the Green's function formalism by proper self energies, as long as the computational cost is no longer a major concern. Third, the density functional theory is less accurate to study some subtle interfaces or strongly correlated materials. We may consider adding some phenomenological parameters to the exchange correlation functionals or adapting to an advanced method beyond the density functional theory. Fourth, direct mapping from synthesis and processing to quantum transport is not available. State-of-the-art atomic device simulation tools provide the mapping from atomic structure to quantum transport, but the atomic structure has to be provided by users. It is desirable to connect processing simulation and transport simulation smoothly. So, we are still a distance away from the final goal. However, most of the problems are not caused by the principles, but related to the lack of computing power. Keep in mind that computing power also grows in a more small fashion. With the exponential growth of computing power, the challenging works today can be routine jobs tomorrow. We are optimistic that the ultimate dream can be realized in the foreseeable future. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Hang Guo, Dr. Lei Liu, Professor Yu Ji Ke, Professor Ke Xia, Professor Yi Bin Hu for its stimulating and fruitful discussions on LMTO method, CPA MC theory, and computational issues. Thank you to all our friends and collaborators for carrying out atomistic device simulations using NanoDSIM in their research. You may send your comments to bluejeanmontreal at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.